Hi guys and welcome back. Today we're going to take a look at a new model from Nao Ti, the NE20 Diving Video Light. We're going to take a look at an unboxing, what actually comes inside your box. So we're going to take a look at some of the light features, battery charger modes, which are actually quite a lot if you can take a look at the front of the light. As usual, we'll jump into the water to see how it performs underwater, as well as the pros and cons at the end of the video. So let's get it started. So we're taking my second light away. In the package itself you can see that this is actually only a cartoon package for the shipping for protection when it's new. Inside we have something I really like, a nice pouch which will allow you not only to transport the light now but during the future, after, before your dives and there is also a bit more equipment that can fit in because the charger and a lot of things which are in here now you're not going to be carrying like every day so you can actually fit also easily two lights in here so that's something I really enjoy about this actual casing. First of all out we have the light itself. We have a very small size, they're very well finished so I really have to tell you the finish is very beautiful and very nice on this. It's very very well as we say workmanship and we also have a very beautiful front you can see the wide angle LED we have of course a narrow spot we have a red and a blue LED so we're gonna take a look at those in a minute but definitely stay tuned because you want to see those inside the package we also have a battery pack and this is something now I really enjoy on this one it just came off but we have a battery pack protection or a cap as they call and this one allows you to protect your battery from having any short circuit or anything which might damage the actual battery pack and which can be actually quite dangerous or could be dangerous. You simply have a protection which you can put on whenever the battery is not inside the light. You can protect your battery pack better like this and also it's a lot easier to put it down and have it standing down. So this is something I really have to tell you as a plus right away in the beginning. Many companies don't have this kind of protection protection integrated or included let's say. The battery pack itself we have a lithium ion battery pack as usual 11.1 volts nominal so 12.6 volts when fully charged at a float voltage we have a capacity of 2900 milliamp hours and this adds up just a bit of or a bit more than 32 watt hours. We have a pack which is made out of three 18650 cells so something like I'm holding in my hand now three of them in here I guess you all can imagine how this looks and the advantage let's say of having a closed pack like this is just you have only one battery as we would have only one battery and to charge we only need to plug in once the actual DC port so you don't have to charge each battery by itself every time so that makes it a lot easier and I really enjoy to see this and I also have to tell you I've seen a lot of packs before and this one actually looks quite well made it's really nice de nicely designed and it's like sturdy yeah you can you can't move anything so this is a very well made pack from the first side on inside of the package we also have of course the charger the charger itself is a charger you can use basically all around the world it has an input of 100 up to 240 volts and a 50 or 60 hertz range so this you can use in most countries around the world the output is 12.6 volts which is um, what we could say ideal for this pack and we have an output of 2.8 amps so you can almost charge this battery in about an hour an hour 15 let's give it an hour 13 with an hour 30 with the floating it will be full if it's completely empty so that's quite good it's a bit to the faster side but it's okay for this kind of lithium-ion they are made to be charged with 1c this, this means one times the capacity of the battery so you're still on the good side in here we have a normal charging lead depending on your county where you are staying of course you're going to get the proper connector so a simple lead which connects into the charge on this side and we have a led indicator red or green to show you the charging status of the battery so i'm not going to take it apart i think we've all seen a charger before inside the package we have one more thing or one more package and here we have some things i really enjoy first of all we have the very typical lanyard well, I personally am not going to use a lanyard on the video light. I will fix it on my actual video arms so for the camera setup. But it might be handful or useful for another light or also depending on how you are using it. I'm not blaming anyone to use a lanyard. Better use it than don't or not using it. What I like on this one is it's not too long. When you have a longer lanyard still you can shorten it but for a normal handheld light this is actually perfect because it doesn't make it too 
long or when they are too long the light is usually bouncing around and bouncing against things this one is a bit shorter is also an advantage i like the rubber part on this it's well very very grippy so that's quite a good thing putting this aside this is not why we're here we have some things inside we have first of all typical spare o-rings for the lights very useful to have the proper o-rings as i usually like to say the o-rings themselves should be always kept in a dry place cool place you don't need a refrigerator but you should all def definitely store them in a very dark space because if you have some uv light if you have some light going on into the o-rings they will start to get damaged they will start to fall apart and when you're really gonna need them as a spare they're also gonna be damaged so make sure you store them in a very dark space mainly dark that's the most important about the o-rings at any light inside we also have something and this is actually new for diving lights i never saw this before an o-ring pick tool so you can easily or more easily bring out the o-rings i have some more professional tools but for you guys this is definitely a good use to get the o-rings out with care you don't have to take the o-rings out after every use yeah but if you have used them for a few weeks months and you see that they're getting dirty they're full maybe of even some sand hairs then it's maybe a good idea to either just clean them off and if you see that there is still some dirt maybe sticking even under the o-ring well take them maybe out give them a clean but never ever stretch the o-ring slightly to take it off be slight to put it on but never stretch the o-ring that is very very important in the actual case or pack we also have a small tool and this tool is actually to mount and dismount the actual ball joint so here we have the actual mounting way so mounting bracket for the for the actual ball joint mount here but we also can change this to the ys mount the one i am having here here we have a simple screw simple phillips screw and what you can see here is that on this side we have two parts so two higher standing parts out of this actual bracket and these go into the light a little bit so this won't allow it to turn this is very good i have fixed the ball joints to my lights because i use this system standard or typical from the factory they actually come with the ys mounted and you can upgrade them to the ball joint the ball joint is included in the package this is important to say some other brands they do not include it here it is included in the package moving on the last thing in the actual pack is the user manual the user manual is well quite interesting to read Def definitely give it a read through if this is your first diving light but what i want to come to is the actual specs and if you come here take a look at this we have the white light it's a c xp1830 of course a cree cob chip on board led we have a cree a color rendering index of 80 at 5000 kelvin so it's a bit more to actually a colder white but i don't find it that cold so i don't find it that bluish already it's still a very very beautiful and good light actually for filming the videos we have a spotlight this actually comes out at around 10 degrees but i think the led is a normal 60 degrees but it's a very spotty and this is something i really like on the light we'll come to it in a second and then we have for the red and the blue the xbd leds so the, these do not use as many other brands the xbes they use the xbds from korea we have a 3 times 18650 lithium ion battery pack and we have a depth rating to 100, and 100 meters and this is all I actually wanted to show you. There are some more informations, take a look at those if you have the light with you, definitely interesting. And about the modes, we have 5 types of modes and I'm going to go through them with you in a second. All I want to tell you is, and this is something I also enjoy, is that in every mode, in every color mode you have, you are using, you can have four modes of brightness no matter if it's red if it's blue if it's the spot if it's the wide angle and mainly for the red and the blue this is something very unique i haven't seen in almost any diving lights with these features that you can dim the red and the blue and here you have four modes of brightness for both the red and the blue so this is very good and very beautiful something i also enjoy a lot on this light compared to others of course you have some plastic bagging but this is typical in every light you buy and every new light you buy so let's put all the smaller stuff aside and now let's focus on the light itself the light as i already told you is quite small sized it's very tiny for the actual setup of course we only have three 18650s 
we have a nice finish in the front also in the back so it's not at all slippery and this parts and we have a beautiful button switch in this case what i really enjoy on the light is i might say it as often as i have to but the finish of it the way it is completed the actual quality of the work is very good it looks really really nice and the latest when you're gonna have it in your hand and gonna be opening it you're really gonna know what I mean it opens so nicely there is almost no we could say no friction nothing in between it opens so nicely that it really makes or it feels very good so in here in the actual head part you can see the contacts which will go on to our battery pack down there and these contacts are also spring loaded very nicely made and on this side we just have a simple battery space the pack goes in of course this way so the contacts go on to our head part we close the light again very easily to do and again very simply and easily screwing down and once the light is closed we can operate it very simply, we're gonna keep the switch pressed. If you just press it, there's nothing gonna be happening. We need to keep the switch pressed for about one and a half, two seconds, and the wide angle white light comes on. By pressing the switch shortly, we're gonna be dimming the actual light output always through these four modes. And this is an endless cycle, okay? If you wanna continue, you're gonna keep the light switch again pressed for two seconds, let it go. You have the next mode. This is a spotty mode and here is one of the most or one of the best things I enjoy in this light. If you take a look at the actual light and, and, and the camera is always difficult to see but you literally don't have any spill on this LED. You have only a spot, you have maybe a millimeter or two of spill outwards but there is nothing else outside. So this is perfect if you want to do some macro shots it's almost a snoot of course you can't compare it a snoot is something completely different but if you have this on the low setting yeah you can make some quite nice macro shots with this so this is something i really enjoy and even diving in the rack for example i'm going to put some of the videos up later in the rack we have some very nice effect by only having the actual spot and not any any spill makes it a lot more interesting now same thing four modes you can switch through them all the way endlessly to go to the next mode keep it pressed for two seconds and we are in red mode and here again we have the option of dimming in four modes the red so this is something as i said very new and i haven't seen it that often in other lights then we have a blue attention this is not uv the white things do reflect but this is a simple blue light it's not a uv as some other torches they also don't sell it as uv but don't get confused this is a blue light again dimmable in four stages so that is very good keeping it pressed again for two seconds we have our fifth mode and this mode is a mixture out of the red and the blue LEDs and this will give you a nice color range if you're doing mainly corridor photography or things like this you have a very nice light range and again you have actually five dimmables and just by switching the current going into the blue or the red LED you have some different kinds of mixture so both types of LEDs are always on but just the strength of them varies in between if you keep the switch again press for two seconds you go again to the beginning to the white. If you are or to switch the light off, no matter in which mode you are, you just keep the light switch pressed for two seconds until it changes into the next mode and keep it pressed until it goes off. So let me show you again, if we are on on the high mode and this works on any mode, any color on the light, keep it pressed until it switches and stay pressing it until it switches off and this works in any mode and it's actually the best way of turning it off. You can already feel the light is getting warm, it has some power on 4000 lumens, it's not a joke for this kind of light size, it's definitely a good output. And now I think we already talked enough about the light, it's getting quite long, so let's jump into the water and check out how the Nauti NE20 performs in the underwater diving environment.
Alright guys, so I hope you could get a better idea on how the actual NE20 from Naudi Eye performs in the diving environment, where I guess most of you will be using it. And now for a quick pros and cons. Something I really enjoy in the light. Pros, definitely the size of the light, definitely the high output of the light, and also definitely the, a lot of options you can use on the light. So this is something very nice. And on top of that, the actual spot output. And this for me is what the winner for this light. I've seen many lights with this kind of combi, big, or even like wide angle, high output, we have a spot LED, we have colors, whatever. But this kind of spot, this kind of actually snooty spot with just, they say around 10 degrees. I don't, I don't mind if it's seven or eight or 10 degrees, but not having any spill around. This is the winner for me because it's something very unique. And even on the, on the normal diving torches, you don't get this kind of output. So this is something I really enjoy on it. Something I might say, or as a disadvantage is maybe just for me personally i don't have any use for the blue light a uv for me is something i is more useful something i see more use in it so this is actually the only bad thing about it maybe not using uh, the blue rather than the uv leds but this depends on your needs and your uses of course 4000 lumens it could be 5000 but it's more than enough to have a good run time like this at 4000 lumens you still have 40 to 50 minutes of run time which is more than enough to film during a dive you can also just buy a second battery pack if you need to do multiple dives and don't have time to charge a battery in between all possible also the battery itself you can charge simply by a charge you don't have to take all apart so these are all positive things i have to say the only negative is just basically the uv to blue led but this is my personal opinion so this is always a question what do you need actually also good you have the option of choosing either the ys or the ball joint some use just the ys and give you an adapter to the ball joint makes the whole thing very big like this you have the option to have a small sized and very compact sturdy solution which will work well for you and of course on top of that i actually didn't um until yet mention we have a power indicator in the actual switch so we have a blue, a green, a red to indicate you how much power is left in the actual battery. So this is also a very big advantage on the light. Okay, I think I talked enough about it. Very important for you or something I want to tell you is basically the light itself works very well. I've been of course testing it and always when I do a review like this and I give you a chance to see the light, this is my honest and personal opinion. It's not an advertisement and it's not a paid endorsement for the company. So this is always important for you to understand. I hope you enjoyed the video in general. I hope you can give me a like and in case you don't want to miss out on any of the future videos, make sure to subscribe to my channel. See you next time and always dive safely.